Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. On the series Strategy Game, and we are going to start a new series of Commander Modern Operations today. We're going to try to find the answer to the question what would happen if Russia attacked Ukraine, which, given current events, does not seem entirely unlikely. Now, if you don't know Command Modern Operations, it is probably the most realistic combat operator for air naval battles that is currently commercially available. I think a lot of uh, militaries actually use this to simulate their um, engagements. So let's see and find out what we can derive from this game to yeah, assess the situation. So we're going to start a new game here. We're going to go to one of the live scenarios. Well, they're up over here. And we're going to go for the, not current sunrise, dawn of a new era. Now there's a lot of backstory to this, uh, you're free to read that, you should probably pause the video here, because I'm not going to read all of that. Um, but the effective engagement here is, it's 2016 and there is going to be a Russian attack on Ukraine. Feel free to save, uh, to, to pause this, um, I'm not going to go into all of the detail here. Uh, the important thing is that we are going to get some of uh, some of the more modern fighters. But yeah, let's see. We're going to load that up. We're going to get a, a side briefing for the NATO side because, of course, we're going to play as NATO here, um, which I think is pretty interesting. Now we are going to look at some aspects of that. Again, there's going to be a wall of text here, and I'm not going to look at all of that. But there are a couple of interesting things over here. So the weather is going to be clear. Sea state is going to be fine. There are going to be a lot of um, Russian vessels here. I'm not going to note down all of these because I don't want to have that perfect level of uh, knowledge. But I am going to note that they do have three modified Kilo class submarines. So these are going to be interesting. We're going to try to find them. But yeah, really not sure whether um, they're going to be around. And um, they do have a lot of various different assets here. They do have a lot of planes. I'm not entirely sure how many planes that represents. But it's probably a lot. This is a scenario that is absolutely, absolutely massive. So there are hundreds of planes in this scenario. And that's actually going to be quite challenging to get into a game. Now on the, the land, uh, there is uh, pretty interesting information here. They do have a couple of SSMs, that's surface to surface missiles. So missiles that can hurt our ships. And they also got the S-300 and S-400 air defense systems. These guys are beasts. They have absolutely incredible range. Oh, they also have the S, uh, SS-26 Iskander missiles. These are, I think, ballistic ballistic tactical missiles. So, not quite nukes, but uh, kind of filling the same purpose as a tactical nuke may be. Right, um, anything else then? Well, there's three, three Russian SSBs. There are various different... Planes. We're not again gonna go into all of that. Please do feel free to pause if you really need to. Uh, we do should we should though take a look at our ships here. Yeah, it's just a handful of ships really, just a half a dozen or so. Uh, we've got a lot of different planes, and we're gonna look at them on the map. So don't need to be specifically too uh, interested by that. But uh, I am interested about this. So the Ukrainian forces are not under our direct control, and we do not have uh, we have very little contact with them. They mainly have SQ-27s and MiG-29s, okay. Rush into a vibe very predictably and will likely die honorably. <laughs> and in vain, I might say. The army is modernizing, but really a hotpot of Soviet equipment with some modern stuff. Got it, and stocks are good for the next 36 hours. So 36 hours is the, yeah, game thing here. So, various different things. Okay, let's enter this scenario. No, uh, no sense in delaying it. Now, this is the overall map, and you can see it's sort of minimalistic, but it is a nice global uh, view of things. So we're going to go through the symbols here, what they mean, um, and we're going to look at the landscape here. So basically, these light blue things are our forces. Uh, the most important things are these little squares with the sort of semi-run way through it. Um, that's an airbase, and if it has a little triangle there, that is an airbase with planes in it. So we've got a couple of these here in the rear. Then we've got a couple of submarines, that's this little circle that's sort of under the water. We've got a couple of ships, that's this entire circle. And we probably can find a plane somewhere, yeah, that's the thing up in the air, sort of semi-circle there. Um, the orange stuff indicates that these are Russian st uh, things, which are currently considered as hostile, but not as, sorry, as unfriendly, but not as hostile yet. So we are not in an active shooting war here against the Russians. So, let's take a couple of moments here. Uh, this is going to take a few mi minutes to assess what we've got, lay out our basic strategy, 
And I think what we're gonna do is, this might be a short episode where we just go through the fundamentals, but I am gonna put up another episode at the same time, where we go right into the actual action. Which might say, take some time to develop, but yeah, let's take a little tour here of our assets and what we've got uh, in terms of the lay of the land. So I think, uh, speaking about the lay of the land, that might be actually the most interesting thing here to start with, and I'm gonna actually start here with the relief layer, and not the sentinel map, so that should take a moment to load in. But that's going to give us a better idea of the relief. So, this is obviously Russia, this is obviously Ukraine, so the uh, area that we're going to be fighting over. This is Crimea. There seems to be very little in terms of elevation in most of Ukraine, except for down here on the very southern tip, which might be a very interesting thing to note, because Notice this little thing down here, and um, it's going to take a moment to load that um, a little bit better. <laughs> Hopefully I say that and then it just doesn't do that at all, right? So yeah, so you can see this thing here has um, elevation of around 4,500 to 5,000 feet or so. Which is interesting because that probably means that if we look at the dispersion of Russian assets a little bit more to the north here around Odessa. No, sorry, that's not Odessa, Svestopol? I think it's Svestopol. Um, we can see that we might do an approach from the south by south east here and maybe be in the radio, radio shadow of these mountains. That might be useful. Other big elevations is of course the Caucasus down here, which is relevant because uh, Turkey down here is a NATO member and we just might be crossing into them here. A couple of Russian air bases here, I'm not sure whether there are going to be any targets there, but yeah, that's about it. Right. We've got a couple of mountain ranges here in, I think, the Carpathian Mountains in Romania. Probably the Iron Gate somewhere here. I think this is the Iron Gate, right? No, I'm not too sure. Well, but other than that, it's, it's really kind of flat terrain. Let's look at Ukraine itself. Yeah, there are a couple of gullies here. Elevation, 80 feet, 70 feet, yeah, 300 feet. So maybe we could try to weasel our way through there through some of these drainage um, valleys to try to be in the radio shadow of some things. But I'm kind of guessing that we are mostly going to be fighting over this area here in the front, so probably not the most relevant. So I think we don't need to be particularly keen um, on most elevation maps. I'm going to make one, one exception for this one down here. This could be relevant. We're going to see. We're going to see. I'm guessing that at some point we're going to fly in the, uh, an attack against uh, Crimea. Well, that being said, uh, we can switch back to... I don't particularly like the relief layer, it's too bright uh, for me. So, let's get back to the Sentinel, Sentinel map, and that should load in and give us a bad uh, representation here. So, right, uh, let's look at our assets, and I, I'm actually going to start on the air side, and I'm going to move a little bit west to east so that we're getting more closely to the front line. And the basic reason for that is I want to know what we have sort of further away so I don't forget it, because it's going to be easy to focus on the front line throw in all of the planes that we've got there and sort of forget that we have something uh, in reserve. So let's look at that. So down here at Gibraltar, or sort of at least the general vicinity of Gibraltar, we've got two airplanes only stationed. These are P3 Orions, so basically patrol craft. You guys are carrying the A anti-ground missile? AGM, what's guided missile? I don't know what the AGM stands for, but it's basically a harpoon, so it's basically a ship, um, an anti-shipping missile. It's alright, they're carrying two of these, two planes, it's it's not particularly exciting, but it's nice to have some patrol um, area around here. And in fact we might want to do a little patrol here, just to see whether they are around there, but I'm not too sure. Right, let's hop over to Sicily, we've got a large airbase over here with uh, 24 airplanes, Jesus, that's a lot. So what have we got over here? We've got a various mixture of things. So we've got a couple of P3 Orions uh, again. These are again Maritime Patrol aircraft. These guys are currently carrying MK uh, Mark 54s. I think these are torpedoes. Yeah, these are torpedoes. So these guys are there to hunt down, well, basically submarines mainly. And you can see they are also carrying a, a couple of ANG SSQs. These are... Uh, sonar boys. So you drop them in the sea, they give you a signal back to the aircraft whether there is any sonar contact. So basically good at hunting down enemy sh uh, enemy submarines. 
Another maritime surveillance here, and it might be worthwhile to look at whether we can rearm these things. So yeah, a couple of AGMs, so anti-shipping missiles, we could uh, arm it with torpedoes. Yeah, honestly, I'm not particularly keen on having no loadout at all. Um, that does, of course, mean that it still has a couple of um, sensors, specifically radar installations and, and so on. But it doesn't have anything else. So you know what, why we're here, let's really immediately ready that up uh, with, I'm guessing the anti-submarine uh, weapons are going to be an, an interesting feature here. Let's load that up. It's going to take four times for that to ready. Um, and that's going to be all right. But then we're going to have it ready as soon as possible. E3s, ooh, very good uh, surveillance aircraft. Very, very nice. Good to have these guys. Uh, we've got a couple of tankers here. These are centerline boom drogues, so that's nice to see. These guys do have um, a centerline piece here, and it can do two things. It has the, li the little um, drogue, but it also has uh, the shoot sort of, uh, sorry. It has the boom, but it also has the drogue, so it can uh, fuel both alternative systems. One of them is a little bit more rigid than the other, I would say, um, but yeah. P-8 uh, Poseidon's also patrol aircraft, basically, and another one uh, classified here as, as maritime surveillance. Do we really need that? We could arm you with other stuff. I'm kind of tempted to do that. What's the difference here between these variants here of these torpedo? I am not too sure, honestly. Can we find out? So your range is 40 miles. You've got a good hit probability. You've got a 200 pound. You, you're wearing. Uh, you're weighting 200 kilos. You're also weighing 200 kilos. You're not as accurate, and you don't have that much of a range. Wait a minute. Why was that different on the other one? And submarine. Why are you so much better there? Cruise speed? Oh, I think I know what this is. This is probably, this is probably, yeah, I think this is a torpedo that's basically jumped into a missile. You know what? That sounds fun. Let's, uh, let's build it up. We've got more tankers here and a couple of further uh, patrol craft. Yeah. So again, Sicily pretty much only patrol and sort of support stuff. That's going to be all right. Another Italian here in Calabria, I think. And um, what have you guys got? 16 aircraft. Ooh, Eurofighters. Now that now we're talking. Uh, these guys are, of course, Eurofighter Typhoons. Very good multi-role anti-air fighter. You've got the A, the MRMs. So basically, 120, 120C. Is it 120 or do you say 120? I don't know. Um, either way, these are very good anti-aircraft missiles. We've got, also got a couple of Iris T, so more short-range stuff. But yeah, these are going to be a very, very good asset here um, that we have available to us. Probably Italian super, uh, Eurofighters, I guess. Uh, another thing down here. Oh, this is the this is a bunker, so this might be a target for them. I'm going to be interested to see whether it actually is. Another airbase here up in northern Italy with 18 further aircraft. Ooh, tornadoes. And that also looks like Italian stuff. So tornadoes are sort of ground attack aircraft and um, with a dead loadout. That's uh, destruction of enemy air defenses. So that's very good at uh, not just suppressing, but actually destroying enemy anti-air assets. Is it going to be enough though? Because the S-300 has an incredible range and these guys have a range of 70, 70 miles. The good thing about these things is that they're typically very, very fast, which makes them hard to shoot down. That's good. Cormoran sounds like an anti-shipping missile. Is it? Yeah, it is. Um, 30 mile radio range. Eh. And sort of a mixed, mixed approach thing here. What's a Storm Shadow? A Storm Shadow is, looks like a long range, and indeed it is. Long range, what, what, are, what are your targets? Land structures, mobile units, runways. Interesting. And are you... Your terrain following, level cruise fight, flight. But very low speed, actually. So you're, you're very prone to being shot down. You're kind of hard to spot, though, on radar. Um, on all radar bands, actually. You're going to be very hard to spot. 
That's kind of nice. Maybe we can do something with you. How many of these guys have we got? Four planes. So that's eight. Eight of these guys. Maybe useful for an anti for a strike roll. We've got our Vino airbase. Uh, what have we got here? 29 aircraft. F-16s and a lot of them. Buzzards 1. And more F-16s. Triple nickel. What have you guys got? You've got JSAMs. That's also anti-ground stuff. Sort of long range. Yeah, nice. You've got harm. So also, um, this is suppression of enemy air defenses. But honestly, the difference sometimes is a bit technical. These guys are built to destroy enemy air, uh, enemy air defenses. So that's good. Also got Mavericks. Two Mavericks on an F-16. Mavericks are... Basically anti-tank missiles. They're there to destroy like two tanks. They're very small missiles. 200 kilos. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not, not too sold on these, honestly. Couple of Amrams. That's nice to see. C7. Uh, what's your range, actually? 60 miles. Sometimes the Russians have a little, little bit better range, but uh, they uh, the Amrams are... Uh, homing, completely homing. They've got an active radar seeker, active radar seeker, whereas the Russians sometimes have a passive one. So they need to keep illuminating the target with another aircraft. And that's all in this game. So that's all simulated. Uh, a couple of GBUs. That's uh, more or less free-falling bombs. Uh, a lot of them probably uh, with a seeker warhead. Yeah, laser spotter target. Low range. You basically need to be exactly above your target, uh, but then you can bomb the crud out of them. More Mavericks. And the, the you're only carrying a single Maverick now, you're also carrying some bombs. How about you guys? Did you carry some bombs as well? No. But I mean, it's nice that you're also carrying some anti-air stuff, and you're actually carrying the D variant here, which has a higher range. That's a bit awkward, because that means our anti-tank aircraft are the best at shooting down enemy planes. We need to keep that in mind. Oh, and some class ammunition here. What are you good at? Against anti-tanks? Yeah, that looks like it's an anti-tank weapon. And a couple of sentries, so that's AVEX. You're actually already assigned to a mission, that's good to keep in mind. Uh, we've got Germany, Rammstein Air Base. Just four aircraft here, so not too much. And again, this is tankers. Eh, okay, fine. It's good force enablers, don't get me wrong, it's nice to have them around. Um, and it's good to have them set back a little bit. Let's take a look at England. So what have you got over here? Um, Roth Fairford with only eight planes. Ooh, ooh, B ones. Now that's that's interesting. Very few dedicated bombers in this uh, in 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 the NATO arsenal, honestly. And this is most certainly a dedicated bomber. What have you got then? Uh, also Jasons. So, but look at that, twenty four of these. You can certainly certainly. Try to strike towards the enemy. This, these guys are carrying are basically a ton each, and you're carrying 24 of these. That's that's really really nice. Um, not entirely sure what the difference here is in this variant, but look at the range here too. These guys are super awesome. Uh, the B1, I, I don't think you have got stealth characteristics, but I think you're not too easy to spot, are you? Um, your radar, no, your radar signature is actually kind of significant. Yeah, especially with the loadout like the no, it's actually it's semi independent of the loadout. Ah, too unfortunate. Well, whatever else have we got? Well, start strata fortresses. These guys will need to be out of range, uh, because they are very vulnerable. But they should carry a massive punch. What are you carrying, guys? You're carrying eight of these these things, and you're even weightier. Five hundred mile radius. Hmm, difficult to spot, but not that difficult. And kind of slow. Hmm. Yeah, it's going to be difficult to, to actually get good penetration here with you guys. Can we support other weapon loadouts? No, we only basically have what we are, currently have. Interesting. Hmm. Uh, and then we've got... Ooh, another B2. Nice. Nice. It's, it's very rare that we get these uh, toys, but it's only a single one of these guys. Um, now that is a stealth aircraft, and you're carrying 16 bombs. Um, how many of these guys do you have? Available on mags and 
on the aircraft. So you're telling me you only have that single launch, basically. Yeah. We only have exactly one sortie with you guys to drop all your bombs. Still, it's kind of cool to have the B2. I don't think I've ever played it with a B2 here. Right, more... What are you guys? Tankers? Fine. But these guys are only the winged rogues, so they don't have a centerline boom. Uh, we also got another single aircraft here. That's a Cobra. Okay, fixed um, surveillance. Okay, fine. Talent. And then Lakenheath. A couple of Grim Reapers here. F uh, 15s. Sure, why not? How many play? Uh, how many anti-aircraft missiles do we have? Two only. What's your radius? Ah, uh, difficult to say because you're sort of built on a cap mission. All right. Um, now let's get closer towards the front line uh, and let's look at Central Eastern Europe. Um, we've got Hungary over here. You've got seven planes, uh, Gripens, so Swedish fighters, with a couple of uh, now RB74s. This is Sightwinder, right? And this is a uh, AM120B. So you're not ideal, honestly. But you're going to be nice to have anyway. Greece, what have you got? You're bringing a couple of F-16s. Uh, including these spies. What does the spies do? That's a Mark 48. That's a bomb, right? Yeah. So somewhat guided missile. Very high accuracy. Uh, sorry, not missile bomb. But, hmm. Okay, Crete. Crete has only three aircraft. These are another couple of surveillance aircraft and a tanker. No, another Intel aircraft. Got it. Cyprus, 16 aircraft here. Ooh, look at that Reaper UAVs. Interesting. What kind of weaponry do you have? Brimstone dual mode. That looks like an anti tank missile. 50 kilos. Yeah. Surface ships, mobile units, land structures. Got it. Could you could you arm with anything else? I haven't really played with UAVs too much. Brimstone, recon, no, no. Oh, uh, you also got pipeways. These are a little bit more substantial. Okay, got it. Uh, a couple of sentries. Early one warning. Typhoon, so yet more Eurofighters. Including uh, with some bombs. U2s. What are U2s? Oh, that U2. That U2. Wow. You should be able to fly much higher than pretty much everyone else. What's the server ceiling? I normally don't look at the server ceiling because it normally is not really that important. So where's that? That's the detect range. I think that actually does tell us that you can go that high. That's amazing. Now I'm not too sure whether that's going to be helpful against S300s, but my, I've that's really, really lovely. You know what? We're going to launch one of these guys immediately because I just want to play around with them. Um, we've got a couple of tankers and then we've got another ta uh, sentinel here. So, yeah, looks like area surveillance. Yeah, got it. Right. Let's jump over to Turkey see what we've got down here. Um, we've got four planes down here. Just tankers. Cool. Konya. Interesting town, by the way. Um, more surveillance. Honestly, sometimes it's amazing just how they look and also that the, the game does have that. It's just, I like it. I like it. I really do. Uh, do we have an airplane uh, airbase down here? No, but we've got another thing down here. We've got an airbase over here, but that's not occupied. And another bunker. Now, I'm, I'm intrigued to know whether these bunkers are going to be are going to be a target for the enemy. We've got a couple of radar sites here. Uh, just uh, out of interest, yeah, you are operating, so that's cool. There's another airbase over here. 38 aircraft. Interesting. Lots of F-16s in various different loadouts. So again, pretty much anti-air. Long distance anti-ground. Short range anti-ground, I want to say. Yeah, short range, 12 miles. Recon pot. Eh, we probably don't need you, but fine, we have you. Couple of anti-radiation missiles, so anti-radar. Um, M of 16s, F-16s, F-16s, got it. And these Mavericks, man. 
It might be useful, it might be useful, but only if we get um, the clear to engage against hostile forces down there. Another 20 planes here, mostly F-16s as it seems, sort of different loadout here again. Mm, a couple of more harms and a couple of cluster ammunitions here. So you are again, yeah, the anti-tank bomblets. Um, it's, it's, it's important to know what class ammunition have. Um, class ammunition against uh, runways is very different to the other one. Right, and then I don't, yeah, I know we do have some in Bulgaria. 33, yes, Raptors. Nice, I love Raptors. I still consider this to be the best fighter in the world. So that's really good. Um, interestingly, you do have a lot of bombing loadouts and you actually have a lot of bombs uh, for for that purpose good range too nice we also got a couple of F-35s you've got mostly an anti-air loadout a couple of F-15s anti-air loadout and a couple of um, offensive OCM so sorry OECM so Electronic countermeasures against the enemy. Nice to see. Uh, what do we have at Graf Ignacio? Lots and lots of F-15s. Yeah, the two version, two, two seed, yeah. Yeah, and it's sort of again a mixed loadout here. It was interesting to see this, this big, big, different mixture here. Um, and I'm int very intrigued about these uh, these harm loadouts here. Because that might be exactly what we need to break uh, through some of the Russian anti-air defenses. Lots of tankers and some uh, further, further electronic warfare. And then the last airbase that we've got is just over here in Romania. And that's a couple of Jesus, really F-16s. Now F-16s is nice. The F-16 MLU. I don't mind that. But what I do mind is their their loadout here. That's just, they only have sightwinders. That's that's short range stuff, 10, 10 miles. That's basically knife fighting range in modern combat. So that's not really that ideal. We don't have any air forces in Ukraine itself, but we do have some, some ground forces it seems. They're not under our control, they're A, so they are um, currently said to be something else. We've also got a landing zone here, interesting. That might be coming in handy um, if we do need to defend that. Oh, by the way, here we could have told where the where the iron gates are. Yeah, well, no point in dwelling on that. Uh, we also got a couple of special forces down here, SEAL teams it seems. Uh, they're keeping an eye on things, interesting. And then lastly, we've got the assets down here in the Black Sea. We've got a British destroyer, Type 45. Yeah, that's cool. You guys are you guys are doing good. That's that's a very modern uh, ship. Like it. And um, what do you have in terms of planes? You've got a couple of wild planes here. So torpedoes and your what? Marlet. What's a marlet? You are a guided weapon against surface or land targets. So kind of anti-tank weapon. It's very very tiny. Thirteen kilos only. Um, you've got a lot of these, but is that really that useful? Oh, I do wonder. Right, we've got another frigate here from the Turkish Navy, so considerably less modern. Uh, but you also have a pl uh, an, um, helicopter here. <laughs> okay, you've got an anti-submarine warfare helicopter, which acts exactly, which is carrying a single torpedo here. Eh, I'm not too sure whether that's going to be useful. Uh, we do have a submarine though so that's nice um you only have torpedo so so basically nothing else an Arlo Berkey class United States Navy now I've been getting a lot of flack because I did call them as slightly aged but honestly they are they've been built when exactly they're not they're, they're good ships don't get me wrong but they are just when were when was the original one built must be in here somewhere. And I'm not going to read all of that, but it's sort of you know you see some of their technology here, 1970s stuff. Yeah, it's been modernized. You've got better radar stuff, and they are they are considerably fighting forces, but they will be spot and they will be spot easily. Um, another frigate here, I guess, of the Turkish Navy. 
no, Bulgarian Navy, but I think for our purposes they're going to be considered both uh, kind of okay-ish. Two frigates here, uh, probably Romania then? Yeah. Got it. Yeah, so we're going to try to consolidate these guys, I think. Uh, because right now, for my purpose, they're a little bit too, too drawn out here. I think Duncan is the only one that I'm kind of comfortable um, having around there. On its own. It's close to a lot of air bases here, but everyone else should be a little bit uh, clustered up. We've got a further ship down here, the another Arlo Berger class. You guys are carrying a lot of Tomahawks, so this is uh, long range cruise missiles. Very long range cruise missiles. Uh, so actually, I don't think we need to get you into the Black Sea. Not even sure whether we could get you into uh, 36 hours, we could probably get you in there. But I think we're going to be happy having you here and then sort of try to bombard them. We've also got a submarine here. That's, ooh, Ohio. Are you guys carrying nukes? Could this go nuclear? No, you're not. But you're carrying 150 Tomahawk cruise missiles. I'm very intrigued what would happen if we fire that off against Crimea. Well, I don't know. We might find out in, in, the, per, in, in the course of this uh, little let's play here. I'm going to just briefly hit the, uh, the unpause button here just to get an idea of what's going on. Uh, because a lot of things sometimes just uh, sort of spawn in or you haven't been spotting them um, as you go. Right, so uh, there's, there's a lot of contact here, right? Can we, can we see anything? No. Right, um, that being said, I think this is going to be it for the overview here. And as I said, I'm going to post the next video right away after this so that you can go right into the action if you want. That being said, do leave a like uh, if you uh, support this channel and... Just let me know your thoughts of how this is going to go. I'm, I'm, I've absolutely no idea and I've never handled this amount of assets in a single Let's Play here. I'm intrigued. Bye bye guys for now and see you around for this little Let's Play episode. Bye guys.